Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Adam from Team Jesus Preachers here. I am doing a live stream video here. I want to let everyone know <clears throat> uh, that we have an outreach coming up. Basically, uh, 4th of July outreach that we're going to be doing in a couple weeks here. Just one sec. We're uh, leaving the house. There it goes. Praise God. So, amen. I wanted to uh, reach out and let everyone know, <clears throat> number one, so you can pray for us as we travel back up to Michigan. This is my hometown where I grew up, born and raised, northern, lower peninsula of Michigan, a place called Traverse City. There's this event that goes on there around the 4th of July every year. It's called the Cherry Festival. <clears throat> it's uh, It draws about half a million people. It's a huge event. Probably the biggest event in Michigan, I would say. And so uh, we're going to be heading up there again. We went last year, and it was really blessed. I wanted to share a quick testimony, if I haven't shared this yet, about this trip. Because we've had confirmation that God wants us there for... I think for the main reason would be because I don't think they're getting a lot of preaching there. Uh, you know, so what happened was is when we went there last year, <clears throat> we were walking through the park area where they have the fireworks and this lady and husband saw our signs and they approached us and they were reading the signs and they said hey are you guys team jesus preachers and uh so they um had been watching our channel and uh lo and behold yeah we were we were the ones that that they had been watching and so here we were now walking uh in their hometown and they were really blessed to meet us and they were really in need of ministry this couple they had uh, had real serious marital problems and drug issues and you know so uh it was like a divine appointment it was amazing so right there we ministered to them they repented and prayed with us rededicated their lives to the lord <clears throat> so now fast forwarding to last month my wife and i were talking about whether or not we were going to go back to michigan and then the very next day after we were discussing our plans, if we were going to do this trip again or not, this lady that we had met uh, of this couple, the married couple, she actually texted my wife. We hadn't heard from her in a year. And so it was confirmation, one confirmation that God wanted us to go back. The other confirmation we had was is Brother Matthew was uh, preaching at the Fort Myers bars last month, and he got approached by a lady when he was preaching and she said, hey, you know what? I was out at Torch Lake over the 4th of July, and I saw some preachers out there. And she said that it really touched my heart, and it really stuck with me when I saw these preachers out there at Torch Lake. And that was us. <laughs> so she was referring to when she had an encounter with us, uh, our preaching, and she said how blessed it was. And uh and so that was like uh, within the same week. I, I might have even been the very next day. So it was like they had these two confirmations that God wanted us to go back and do this outreach again. So I want to let everyone know. Uh, the other reason is is that maybe you live in Michigan, uh, northern Michigan, or somewhere in Michigan. You want to come up there and meet us. And, you know, we need laborers. Uh, this year it's just going to be my wife and I going up. So... We need people that can come and carry a banner and hand tracks out and people who are filled with the Holy Spirit and that can talk to other people when they come up. Uh, you know, it's difficult when it's just a couple people up there, you know, trying to do all this work of street evangelism. Uh, so reach out to us. Email me, teamjesuspreachers at yahoo.com if you do live up there and you, you know, want to come and either labor with us or just meet us, say hi and, <clears throat> you know, Maybe talk with us. Maybe you need prayer, uh, that kind of thing, too. Uh, you know, it was interesting. So what it is is that we have Torch Lake. I was talking about Torch Lake. And if you guys didn't see the video from that, what that is is this lake, Torch Lake, is a, is like the, they call it the third most beautiful lake in the world. And so this is like this oasis up there in Michigan. It, it's like the Caribbean. It, they have this gigantic sandbar that is on this lake. And it's like ankle deep water so people go and set their boats up around this huge sandbar and then they party on this on the sandbar in this beautiful lake 
and it, it just draws a lot of people it's like a spring break type atmosphere a lot of partying drinking of course just all that comes with the party atmosphere and a lot of souls you know a lot of people come to this lake and so uh, if you saw the video last year it was really good because i don't know if anyone's ever preached on the sandbar before uh so we had quite a buzzing and as far as you know people getting convicted and interested in what the preaching was and so we're gonna go back uh and just try to plan ourselves on this this torch lake again and make this hopefully a uh, yearly thing so please pray for us very important work up there you know michigan just legalized marijuana usage for recreational purposes and uh you know it's just the thing that's spreading across this country and uh, you know, and uh, it breaks my heart because Michigan uh, is where I grew up. Like I said, it's where I received my four felonies for selling marijuana back in 2004. You know, and it's sad that now the police can't even bust people for drug usage like this. Uh, you know, and that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. If it wasn't for me getting busted, you know, I may still be entangled in my addiction of pot smoking, pot dealing. So it's just, you know, it really breaks my heart that Michigan has gotten on the bandwagon with this agenda to just, of just lawlessness, just an agenda of lawlessness. So we go out there to shine the light and uh, these young people who are being affected by this, um, these ungodly movements, uh, you know, the, the people are casting off the restraints of God, like Psalms 2 says, they break his bonds apart and they cast his cords away from us. And, you know, it doesn't matter because, you know, men can legalize, they can legalize marijuana usage. They can legalize homosexual marriage. They can legalize anything. But God's laws don't change. God's laws of, of purity, of holiness, godliness, of um, cleanliness, they don't change. They're written on our hearts. They're, and God, God n never changes. So it's really sad to see how uh, people will try to change the laws. Like it says, Isaiah said, I think it's Isaiah 20, 24, verse 5, they, they have transgressed the laws. Uh, changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant but the scripture warns that those who roll a stone will have it rolled back on them <laughs> you know the nations have sunk down to the pit which they've made into the net which they've hid their own foot is caught psalms 9 verse uh, 16 says so we go up to just uh extend the hand of mercy of course uh, to people because they know they're in trouble you know people uh, the lord makes sure that people are under that cloud and uh, they can hide it but you know what they know they need mercy they know they need help they know they're in bondage because god shows them like it says in romans 1 verse 21 what may be known of god is manifest in them for god has shown it to them so word i want to share with you this morning in conjunction with uh this update on our trip to michigan is this do not fret because of evildoers and nor be envious of the workers of iniquity psalms 37 this is the scripture that i've been meditating on and that word fret it's not a word that we really use very often nowadays and i looked it up and what it means is it means to be anxious or worried you know and, and i was thinking about this i was thinking so do not fret do not be anxious or worried because of evildoers and nor be envious of these workers of iniquity so you know, anxiety and worry are the beginning stages of fear, okay? So God is saying, look, don't even be, don't even be anxious or worried. Don't even be moved. Don't even be concerned about the, these evildoers. Don't even, if, when they prosper, don't even, don't let it bother you. And, and don't let it become fear because that's what it becomes if you become anxious or worried about something. Eventually you're going to be afraid. You're going to start fearing about these evildoers. Man, these people are rising up everywhere. Man, they're, they're, they're just getting away with their sin. They're just... But see, this whole psalm is, is trying to teach us. If you read the whole psalm, it goes on to talk about it. It says that, um, it says, For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you shall look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And then it goes on to say, it says that the wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth, but the Lord laughs at him 
for he sees that his day is coming. And then he, he, he says that the wicked, they draw, they, they have drawn, they have bent the bow and they have drawn the sword to cast down the poor and needy and to slay those who are of upright conduct. But their sword shall enter their own heart and their bows shall be broken. Uh, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. You know, so there's this uh, thing that God is trying to get us to grab a hold of by faith in the spirit. Okay, the spiritual realm is where we need to be in. Uh, so when we see the wicked springing up like the grass and all the workers of iniquity flourishing, like Psalms 92 says, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. This is what it says there. You know, and so don't fret, don't don't be anxious, don't be worried because of these evildoers, because of these mockers, because of people who uh, are trying to slay the those who have upright conduct. They're trying to kill us. They're trying to uh, they're trying to take over. Uh, you know, they're trying to be like the devil who tried to take over God's throne in heaven. You know, and so what we do is is we are patient. We're patient, uh, letting God avenge us. As we are uh, waiting on God and as we are not avenging ourselves, as we are just having mercy and, and, and reaching out to these people, that's what we're doing as Christians. Uh, you know, but we also know that our enemies are lurking against us. So uh, we see this in the Psalms a lot, you know, where <laughs> there comes a point in time when God needs to avenge us from our enemies, uh, the bloodthirsty, you know, as they hate the blameless. Uh, so the scripture says in Psalm 37, it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Okay. He will bring forth your righteousness like the light and your justice like the noon day. It says, uh, it says, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way from the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. So it mentions that word fret two more times there. Uh, do not be anxious. Do not be worried about the man who prospers in his way. These people will bring these wicked schemes to pass. Uh, cease from anger. Forsake wrath. You know, don't don't be get don't don't allow yourself to get angry. Don't allow yourself to get vengeful. Don't allow yourself to get uh, moved away from having joy and peace and and knowing that the Lord will take care of the enemies of the cross of Christ. You know, like it says in uh, Psalms 91, it says, Only with your eyes will you look and, behold, and, and see the reward of the wicked, for a thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your, at, your, at your right hand, but it shall not come near to you. You know, and this is, uh, you know, as we look out in the world and we see the, the enemy, uh, the devil, working in so many ways, and, you know, it can, it can make you fret, you know, or you can say you can be tempted to fret, tempted to be worried, tempted to, uh, to be anxious and fearful and even get angry. Um, but, you know, God is amazing because, number one, he's so patient and we got to uh, rejoice in this. Uh, you know, like it says in Second uh, Peter chapter three, it says that you know, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise to some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any would perish, but all would come to repentance. You know, so number one, God is wanting people to have a chance to be to escape uh, this, this trap. You know, a lot of people are being swept into these ungodly, uh, lifestyles and, and these ungodly movements. Uh, homosexual agenda is a big one. You know, a lot of young people are being st scooped into this movement. They don't even know what they're doing. They don't even understand what they're what they're falling into. Young people, you know, uh, God's gonna, you know, through His patience and long suffering, just like He did us, He's gonna bring salvation to them. So that's a, that's a, that's a big thing there. You know, uh, that's a big reason why. Uh, Jesus talked the parable of the tares with the wheat, you know, and they came and said, look, look at these tares that are going with the wheat. Shall we not uh, get these tares out of there? You know, and, and and the Lord said, no, lest when you uproot the tares, you you destroy, you hurt the wheat too. He says, let them grow together at the time, until the time of harvest. So uh, there has to be uh, a growing together so that God would let the wheat come forth and uh you know god is is still saving people who are in these in these groups but there will come a time when 
uh, the fullness of the Gentiles will come in and then God will bring the harvest. So, but God is so patient, long suffering and God, here's the other thing that God is doing in the midst of this. God is, is wearing away at the wicked. You know, as we see them prospering, as we see them increasing, as we see them in the, what seems like triumphing in their agendas, uh, you know, and, and eventually, you know, they're going to actually bring all these things, the mark of the beast and all the antichrist, uh, you know, all these things are coming. We know the scripture talks about it. But the scripture says that the triumph in the wicked is short and they're going to be destroyed forever. So we got to be patient. We have to rest and uh, not allow these things to uh, move us. So that's what God has been ministering to me. You know, this is why we, uh, when we minister, when we reach out to people, we're, we have to keep this in mind so that we don't let the things we see going on around us move us uh, to, um, to lose sight of the peace and the joy that we're to have in the Lord because He will bring these things to pass in His own time. Uh, you know, the Lord will judge in His time. We don't want to be, you know, forcing something, um, you know, because when you're open air preaching and when you're ministering, you know, God is giving you authority. God is giving you uh, the gospel. And what you do with it is so important, how you administer these things. Because you know, it's like us, you know, we go to the beach and, you know, I go to the beach and I see these women, you know, you know, just acting in lewdness and shaking their rear end, trying to get me to stumble and trying to mock and you know I can try to fight back in the flesh you know I can try to just you know rail <laughs> you know that's where railing comes from you start railing on people and you start just kind of gnashing your teeth back at them but what you do is you get in the flesh when you do that you really start fighting flesh with flesh instead of really fighting uh, f fighting you know people who react out that way the best thing you can do is to is to give them give them the goodness and severity of God, give them the grace and truth. And, you know, but ultimately what we want to do is love them. You know, that's not just, you know, that's not you just, just excusing their sin, but it's you ultimately showing them the hope, uh, in, in their hopeless situation, you know, showing them, uh, that you are believing for them. You, you're, you're praying for them and you're, uh, you know, you are, showing mercy to them even as you are warning them you know because that's what we're called to do so much sounding the trumpet but you know this kind of attitude this thing that we carry as christians is so important because if we have the mind of christ in the way that we uh are administering or ministering these heavenly truths this reality being i'm talking about being heavenly minded seeing things from god's perspective uh, you know, what we're going to do is, is we're going to be able to help people to draw out of their fleshly carnal mind and get into a, a spiritual mind that their hearts might be broken and that back the condemnation to give them in, even at the last hour, that they might get the same reward as those who bear the heat of the day. See, that's what God is doing the prodigal son, that he might come to his senses and come home and humble himself and make me like one of your hired servants. We're extending that same hand of mercy to people who are in a place where they, it seems so hopeless. And um, so that's basically my